Hello, everyone. Uh, it's so nice to see you here in Warsaw at the next Block Expo event. Uh, wow, Wukash, your, your face is like really huge in here, so you're going to be clearly visible. Yeah, I assume like that. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, All right, so uh, we're going to talk AI, guys. I don't know, have you ever heard about AI or ChatGPT? Have you? Yeah, you guys are joking. Guys who are saying they haven't heard anything about ChatGPT are lying, obviously. All right, so um, today we're not going to talk directly about the ChatGPT and not directly about the AI. I think that the matter that we are going to touch the most is the subject of AI agents, the intelligent AI agents and the autonomous AI agents, and how they can impact the world of uh, talents, creative creators, and also the whole area of marketing and brand management. So I believe since Wukash is, well, totally the most suitable person when it comes to talking about the technical aspects, uh, but also the rest of our guests too are, are pretty, pretty handy. Guys, the first question is, is up for grabs for anyone. What are the AI agents actually? And what is the difference between the intelligent AI agents and those that are autonomous? Because I think this is something that we need to start with if we want to dive deeper into the subject. Okay, so I, I think I can try with, with this question. So basically, first of all, AI agents are not something that has been invented with the chat GPT hype. So it has been uh, in the area of machine learning since 1940s, I think, the first initial idea of what could be the uh, agent-based system and agent-based uh, analytics. However, like 1990s were the, the, the time when all agent-based, multi-agent-based system has been like booming. So it's not like something completely different, but it's right now it's used for helping to understand, helping to divide, uh, or helping to navigate how we can treat the uh, large language models, like the models are behind the chat GPT engine, uh, how we can use them, how we can navigate through the, uh, through the understanding of, of these new large language models, and then, of course, how we can build products, build solutions using them. So basically, the agent is, I think the best uh, analogous is looking for the agent as the human being. And we like this kind of analogy because it helps us like immediately understand what is the agent capable for. So basically, we describing to the agent what the agent should do, and he will behave in this, this manner. And if the behavior is more like the um, according to specific rules, we have like the very simple, uh, very simple agent, so something similar to NPCs in, uh, in games, for example. However, the autonomous part, it's something that the agent is interacting with the environment and is making a decision what to do, how to do it, uh, what tools he should use to, um, to make the specific, uh, specific thing. Uh, autonomously based on the, uh, the feedback from the, from the environment. So basically the, the really straightforward uh, example of autonomous agent will be like driving assistant. So interacting with the roads, with the, uh, with the car and figuring out what should be the next, next thing to do. Uh, it's something that must be decided by the, by the agent. So I think the, the agents basically are uh, going through specific uh, specific path of direction, specific like the uh, decisions and the autonomous part of the agents means that they must figure out what should be done by themselves. They must figure out uh, on their own. Okay, so we would say that if I ask Siri to set up the alarm clock at 8 a.m. so I can get up for the NBX conference, that would be like the regular agent? Yeah, yeah. Even okay. thermostate would be like the treated as the agent. It's definition of the agent. You want to have temperature up or down. It's very, very simple agent, but still it could be treated as the agent. Okay, and then I drive my autonomous Tesla to the event and this is the autonomous AI agent in this case. Cool. Yeah. We have this thing sorted out. Thank you very much. So guys, now the question to all of you. So, um, what are, in your areas of expertise, 
what are the opportunities in different areas of business, how we can actually use those new appliances, these new tools, uh, the AI agents, the autonomous AI agents in your everyday businesses, in your everyday actions. Mariusz? Well, uh, I see amazing potential, you know, because uh, daily I do the talents and the brands management. And, you know, there was in before, the day before I checked uh, in the internet uh, that in 2005 there was a, uh, the definition of UGC, user generated content, appear. And that was a trend, you know, because anyone were sharing the testimonial of uh, using the product services and the brands were growing rapidly based on this UGC trend. Later, that was more difficult, complicated, uh, because many uh, tools uh, appear, so it was difficult to manage those tools. So those content creators state only those one on the market who were able to use those tools, you know, like Adobe Premiere, uh, Photoshop, etc. And what happened now? Look, how it's amazing when uh, there is an opportunity that you could, uh, you could hire your agent to take care about creating content. You could just uh, you know, provide the input based on the audio. So I could, uh, you know, I could experience my uh, product, I could experience my service um, using it, like uh, for instance the phone, recording the input to my agent, and then ask him in the end of the day, okay, listen, so now I need content for Instagram, I need the content for Twitter, I need the content for TikTok, and please, based on my input, audio, which I was sharing with you for all day using this, experiencing the product, and uh, after all, I will just authorize the content. So as a creator, it's an amazing opportunity for all people to share the testimonials of uh, using the services or products of brands they are cooperating. So when we uh, analyzing the situation on the market, because we are the agency, actually I do the management since years. We see that uh, all of you can become the creator right now, because as Lucas said, this is the agent who, uh, which is responsible for choosing the tools which he will use to create, for instance, the image, like mid-journey, or maybe he will use stable diffusion models because I will ask him to create the animation for TikTok. So, uh, from my perspective, I love the idea about the autonomous agents. I will also share more in uh, pitch contests because our product is based on uh, agents. And I see amazing opportunity for all the creators, but also brands. Because the brands are, uh, you know, we believe, I mean, I believe, and we, my team, we believe that the content creators are next billionaires. They will be on the top. So here are the brands, apps, but content creators are on the top. So you have to get in touch with creators. And they will have a really beautiful, amazing opportunity using AI agents to help them create. So they will, can focus on experiencing uh, product services, not spending hours on you know, creating the content. Yeah, I mean, I think this is also what's really, I think, really touching with this area of AI that thanks to creating the limitless opportunities of automatization and making our lives easier, especially in the area of administrative or operational tasks, the overall value of humans' creativity and the ability to create new ideas, generate new ideas and then putting them into use let's say by the use of AI, can make, well, the overall skill set of, of, of the soft skills base more useful for the future generations. Um, okay, so uh, now I think we'll talk about Chile Banks a little bit and the, the Portugal, uh, Portugal environment. Uh, I know that in your case, Bruno, we are doing, we're talking about the community area, interaction with people how those AI agents, or in general maybe AI tools, would be beneficial to you? So, um, yeah, it's, work. it's, it's working. It's working? Okay. Yeah. Um, hello guys, I hope you have fun. Um, in the case of the community Chili Banks, the AI, I go use directly my case. 
I am an enthusiast. So the AI he helped me in so many things to realize my work more efficient. Uh, for answer for my community. Example, I host events. So media, content, everything need this FOMO. And sometimes when you don't have all the skills to make this scalability or create this content, these agents you go help you. I have a project, I have uh, win the hackathon I have organized in, Ch in Chile Banks in, uh, two weeks ago, is uh, Island, the name of the project. So inside of the metaverse is an agent trade the NFTs, they have an interaction directly with you, they help to uh, make all this work you need to uh, learn first sometimes with, uh, with all in Google, and you don't have all the answers, so the AI agent, he go help you with the prompt, organize it with all these engineers, incredible. Um, in no other case, uh, the AI you use for everything in your journey, example, what you tell about the clock in the iPhone, the temperature for some things emotional too. So the, the, the point is you want a, 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 um, a life more efficient, more easy for take care of you and other things in your life. So the AI go help you. The work you make in uh, eight hours sometimes for make a pitch deck, one month, two months. If you have this good team, you go put the good prompts Hey, in maybe in one or two days, you have the best pitch deck. It's, for me, it's, uh, it's a real good future, but we need to create with good conscience outside too, uh, from outside. The other perspective important too, to see and not forget for the reason it's a human go give this order for the agent. So if the agent you want to make a new world more efficient and more beauty, I think it's important to see the part of us too, everyone, uh, create some things fun and cool. <laughs> it's really cool what you say because like, we have those two perspectives. Mariusz likes, he, I mean, I know this guy for a bit of time and he likes to talk about the really big ideas and you probably heard it yourself uh, a few seconds ago. But Bruno, this is really a cool input because this basically shows the individual perspective and the individual effects that AI agents and AI tools can make on your work. And this is really valuable perspective. But I know that Darren is going to be the guy who's going to take a really big long stick and just stick it into the whole subject and probably mix everything up, am I right? Maybe, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, effectively, I agree with both of you guys, um, but what I believe is this is going to be the biggest dynamic shift in the technology industry that we have seen up till this day. Effectively, businesses are looking on how to reduce staff and increase AI and AI agents and automated uh, content creating. They're going to sacrifice quality for quantity and being able to release stuff to the market much sooner and much more efficiently. However, what is going to happen is these very creative people that are stuck in these businesses that are going to be leaving because they're going to be let go based on you know agents coming in to replace them, they're also going to have the capabilities to utilize the tools to be able to create their own types of ideas and creative content and technologies without having to have this massive business operation arm. They can utilize the tools for their own benefit as well. Cool, Wukash. Uh, I think your perspective is going to be, again, way more technical, but I'm really interested about your, 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 your approach towards that everyday use and everyday impact of those AI agents on a more technical perspective. Because when we talk content, when we talk community, it's marketing and people oriented. What about that technical approach of yours? So basically I agree with uh, all three, three persons who spoke before, before me, uh, because basically what we can achieve with the agents is kind of the automation of some task. And some task means you must figure out what should be automated and how it should be automated. I really like to map this concept of how create the, uh, the agent, uh, because it's not like you're creating quite one agent. You can create a dozen of them and make them to, uh, to talk to each other, to figure out together how to solve specific problem or divide the problem into smaller pieces. I, want, I really like to map this to, uh, to the concept of the ultra learning, when you have the idea of you want to have some achieve a specific goal, learn a specific language in a really short period of time. Either you want to be a proficient programmer or proficient marketer, whatever it will be, and you thinking about the learning as the process, and you dividing that into specific pieces, and uh, every of this piece must be measured somehow 
and every of this piece could be treated as the uh, background, as the environment for specific agent. And you're providing this agent a specific task to do. So for example, if I want to be a better researcher, I surely must to be good in writing research papers. So probably one agent would be uh, going through the internet looking for, uh, for specific liter literature on the research idea that I want to uh, create. The other agent, for example, could be created in a way that it will help me to write the code for um, experiment to train the model, evaluate that, and et cetera. The other agent could be improving anything else. So basically, the agent-based approach for me is figuring out what parts of your personal life, or either work life, could be automated somehow, and how it will be influencing your, your life. Do you want to just get rid of a part of your um, things that you must do, either you, must, you want to be more efficient with that, or for example, you are not a big guy uh, who is um, writing a lot of content on social media, however you want to be uh, visible there, you can use for these purposes also the, the agents. And they will be influencing in, many, in man, many places in which especially the tasks are easier to, uh, to be described uh, and easier to be repeated a lot of times. So basically, uh, I think that, for example, programming, either generating uh, images for marketing would be something worth to try because they will be faster generating ideas. And then I really like this confirmation of the human in the end always to, to just choose out of, for example, five different version of the source code that the model generated, which is the, the best solving the specific problem, uh, in a replace to writing this uh, from the scratch on your own. So they will help in, in places when you do not want to do something. Either they are really easy to be uh, described in a repetitive way or, uh, or in the things that, um, that helps you uh, boost your productivity somehow, just cutting the, the time needed for generating something. And okay. uh, one, one thing just to, to, to add to that, I think the, the agents also change how we treat them and how we feel about them in more like the, uh, we feel agents are humans because what we are doing right now using the uh, large language models, which are behind this chat GPT, BART, et cetera models, and maybe even systems, uh, it will be better, better description of that. We describe the agent how he should behave as we describe something similar to the, to the person and it's easier and more straightforward for more wider audience to just create their own agents. So I will, uh, I, I'm really looking forward for what kind of the agents or multi-agent systems that will be created in the future. Okay, so now maybe let's um, attack this topic from another angle. Wow, you look really bad as Darren now. <laughs> okay, so when I scroll Instagram on a daily basis, like a, like a, like a typical millennial, uh, I see a lot of these posts and profiles that say that using AI will make me a billionaire, proper use of AI will make me a billionaire within the next 12 months. And okay, I can agree that using AI tools can actually make my life much easier, but there's also that other angle of discussion uh, regarding, uh, let's say, job losses with the use of AI. You, Darren, talked about it briefly. I know that the perspective in here can be differentiated because some people believe that these are just the tools that we can use to make our work more efficient, but some people in general are going to also lose their jobs. But this is not the, the question here. The question is, if there are so many appliances and so many opportunities within the use of AI agents, and what they can do. What will be the areas in which they will not be able to provide the help on the human level? Where we can thrive exactly? It's, they won't be able to help with motivation. If you're lazy as fuck, you will not be successful. <laughs> I, you, I want to answer too, but... Um, he took your answer, right? No, not... not OC, it's, too much deep, but uh, I want to uh, only remember for everyone, what is the evolution of the humans? Evolution. So progress. To make better. 
So if someone go tell the AI go, take your job, you stay in the same place. You want to change your life, so you go motivate for make some things better and change. It's only a process to re, um, upgrade in the life of someone. In my case, I am upgrade these last 20 years, every time. I have a label music, lo lockdown, I am in the Web3 now. But it's about not take out work. The people in it take out this word of the brand, they put in the prompt, I want to change my journey. What is your skills? Remember your skills. Use your best knowledge, A, use the technology for help you. If you don't have technology, the medicine today don't help too. So it's evolutions, but good evolutions. Hey, I am a human, I'm friendly of the nature, everything, I'm a father, I have a kid with five years, I don't want to see my kid maybe in 49, but I want to see building the same, speak this crazy Vitalik, a new society. But for this, all of us here use good words and good motivations. So technology, it's here for help of us. Not only for make rich, rich is your conscience and your culture. This is the most important. So the technology for, I repeat, for me, it's only a use case for onboarding in new journeys to help the journey of all of us. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I mean, realistically, there's been tools that would assist anybody who's motivated enough to try something new and expand on their horizons and their expectations of what they can actually achieve personally. AI is just the newest set of tools that we can use to kind of expedite that forward. So again, if you're lazy as fuck, 40 years ago, motivation. Yeah, 40 years ago, the fathers of us, he don't believe to pay with the uh, fun, the account of the bills. Today, he's addict. So it's only some things I don't want to uh, make fear for the people. Of course, the opportunities is not the, uh, in the same end of everyone. But if us to create the opportunities for the people, maybe it's changed the, the way and the perspective or the vision of the next 20 years, and not only a short roadmap for pounds crazy uh, moments. This is my word. Marius, yeah, I, I need to like, step a little bit, because for you this question will be a tiny bit different. Because on every day you work on a two different areas. You work on that innovation area deeply connected to AI, but I don't know if you know, guys, Marius is also leading, uh, along with his wife, Isa, uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, casting agency in Poland. So you're really connected to the media and, and entertainment industry in Poland. And this industry, I think, is a perfect example of the area in which the innovation has not been able to get into people's mind that deeply as it should be getting in. So I think I would like to hear the answer on that pre for that previous question. Also, while keeping in mind the perspective of that creative people who would like to get their lives and careers a bit better. Yeah, the creativity is the key word, you know, because, uh, yeah, as you said, uh, I'm running the, also the casting studio where you are one of the actors. <laughs> so what is the dream of every actor? I will ask you now. Ask her. Okay. So... It's uh, being a part of a big movie, yeah? production with uh, you know, awards and everything. So what I'm saying right now is uh, that all the actors have a new opportunity because before they were waiting for the casting, if someone will choose them, and then they will act, you know? So they were responsible for you know, looking for some opportunities, networking, everything. But they were really creative, but they couldn't use their potential. So what changed now? Because of Runway, for instance, is amazing. Uh, you know, um, just by the way, uh, keep in mind Runway ML and Gen2 is giving you the opportunity to create the content directly for a prompt text, you know? I can prompt my uh, footage only from text. So now actor, he can do the movie by himself, you know? He don't have to wait for the opportunity being, you know, chosen to the production. So he can be the Steven Spielberg in the same person as a camera assistant also. He just give the input for AI and it's gonna happen so uh, answering your previous question about the creativity this i mean the creativity is the answer so uh, of course many people had cameras yeah many people have uh, money 
but who get the awards? Those one who have the brilliant ideas. So uh, this is the, 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 the this is the skill which is uh, very difficult to you know uh, take over control of it by AI. Maybe Lucas, you have different uh, vision on it. I, I I I'm wondering what you would say about it. But I believe that the creativity is the last thing which we can you know use as our input. And that's why AI will not change dramatically the in, uh, industry, but it, it will give you the superpowers. You're gonna be superhuman, super graphic designer, super web designer, super uh, producer. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, can, I, can I just say something? Quick? Oh yeah, you have to, Darren. Oh, you have so to. So I, I just have a, a different perspective. I think that AI is going to reduce creativity, which is going to cause a constant. So you've already seen it in major movies, right? Major movies are shit now. Like, there's no content, there's no creativity, it's just big bang, flash, boom, and then you have other individuals who can use the same tools to create their own content, so is it actually becoming more creative, or are we just setting a constant creative using the same kind of tools? I think it's also the part of like the wider trend of yeah. recycling the well-known schemes of the popular culture. Yeah. Let's take, for example, the whole Mar Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, these guys are barely creating any new ideas. Most of them are just basically recreating things that we already know from the comic books for the last century. Right? Yeah. I am a fan. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> I'm a fan as well. I just mean when it comes to creativity, what, what movies do, and, and cinema do you see that comes out now that actually has the same level as it did? Uh, before, you know, 2010, where, you know, AI and, and ML and predictive analytics and all that kind of stuff was assisting on creating content for Hollywood. Avatar. <laughs> Avatar is just recycled, bro. <laughs> and, it, and it was before 2015, right? Yeah, I think that uh, what I was, uh, what I want to say and underline yeah, is the fact that uh, before talents, creators, artists, yeah, they had to get the budgets, you know, to yeah. create the content and uh, to release their potential. There's a lot of amazing people who stuck at home, you know, and they don't have any option to move forward because of the budgets, because of the pipeline productions and everything. So, uh, yeah, th th that would be probably an opportunity for everyone to like, create the content uh -huh. uh, and maybe yeah th this is uh the, pr the proper direction yep. because uh, even each of the kids you know if you ask the kid who you want to be in the future yeah most of them says that they want to be content creators influencers yeah because this is easy life and everyone does the, do this and you know they prefer this style and uh yeah the ai now gonna help them a lot yeah they can even create the content in many different languages, in amazing uh, visuals or uh, copy. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I really enthusiastic about the fact of agents, you know, many people are afraid. Yeah, I always asking if, you know, maybe the question should be like, if you will work for an agent or he will works for you. So I prefer that he works for me than I works for him. Because if he will do the task autonomously, then maybe, you know, most of the people who will not realize what, how quick it's changing, in the future they will just can work for AI. And there will be no option for them that AI will work for them, yeah, because they are too late. So uh, I'm really extremely excited about the fact that this is an amazing opportunity. It's a tool. I use it as a tool, so agents should be used as a tool for all of us, content creators and others who are building the communities or running different uh, businesses. But still, we have to be really open mind and uh, focus on the, those dangerous areas. And because in our uh, industry, like uh, when we create the content, we are afraid that we are not, um, we don't have. Uh, um, license, yeah, the full license is belong to the AI. So uh, the court in states it claims that you create something. I mean, journey, so you don't, you not own the rights to this. So we, te we teach people how to change it a little bit. Yeah, use your creativity to get uh, uh, rights back to you. So uh, cool. <laughs> okay, Lucas, because we have you here. Um, 
Yep. So we, we guys talked about many different opportunities, right? Uh, but the thing is, we have a lot of really, really uh, tech-savvy people and people who are here in for the technology and for the business. So the question is for you, Lucas, I think primarily, with those amazing opportunities, how to safely implement those new AI opportunities, AI tools, AI agents into your business models, how to do it safely to maintain that, to increase your productivity levels, but also do not decrease the overall uh, creative, uh, creativity or, or that uh, natural human flow you have uh, within your work on an everyday basis? So uh, unfortunately, and maybe fortunately, uh, every system that uses uh, AI agents and behind these AI agents, there are also large language models, is really empirical one. And it's not like it is uh, empirical in a deterministic way. So it, will, it could generate different responses for the same input. So basically, if you're talking with the chat GPT, for the same prompt, you can get different responses from what you're writing there. You can get different, different ideas, different recommendations. And the same, unfortunately, will be uh, appearing in the uh, real system in other cases other than chatbots. So, for example, you want to generate the uh, su summary of our panel today. And based on what we told, uh, the same model uh, with the same parameters could generate a little bit different information. And unfortunately, uh, this is the case when you must have some idea how to evaluate if it's correct or wrong. It's basically the same how this model has been in ra last year trained. So basically, they are on, not trained on like the raw data, raw textual, textual data, but they was trained based on uh, feedback from humans. And the, human, the question to human was, is it correct response for a specific text? So for example, imagine if you have the conversation in the chat, you're getting the response. And the human was evaluating if the response from the chat is correct or wrong. Or even they was insist to uh, correct, this, uh, correct this response if it was incorrect. So basically, they were trained to um, simulate the human somehow, to, um, to, to show what would be the, uh, the best response for, uh, for the human that the human will accept somehow. And in production, uh, production environment, unfortunately, it must be evaluated. So basically what is going right now, you're starting with smaller uh, internal testing environment with your employees, then you're providing some um, iterations, how to improve what should be uh, removed, how the model is hallucinating. Hallucinating means that uh, providing information that basically is not... Uh, factually correct, for example, uh, and trying to improve the, the model uh, in an iterative way. And if you see that the model is more or less working correctly, you're going to the, uh, to the broader audience to, to show how it's, how it's going. Okay, so unfortunately, for, it will yeah, not end. Yeah, <laughs> I believe it's a, a huge area. So we have like one minute left. So I have like one last question, just a one word thing, guys. Uh, we're on a conference that is deeply connected to the crypto space. In this space, we've seen a lot of hype and FOMO going around certain trends. ICOs in 2017-18 with a hyped, let's say, Denta coin who promised us that the next big thing is being dentists on blockchain. We had metaverse, we have the NFTs, and now we're going to have the huge rise of new top economics based on AI. Most of them are going to be scams and rug pulls. Uh, how to basically stay safe in that area of FOMO and innovation regarding the AI, where it will be way more difficult to prove that some, let's say, new tools or some new solutions are really not that innovative and they are not going to make it as much as ChatGPT. I think, Darren, this is the question mainly for you. Yeah, it's simple. Do a VC mentality. Nobody is going to be safe in any investment they do. Invest in 10, expect one to do well, and expect, expect nine to shit the bed. It's effectively the best investment strategy you can have. You can do as much research as you want, but ultimately companies fail. It might not even be a scam or a rug pull. It could just be the company fails because they don't have adequate leadership. So pull a VC model. That's how they succeed. Invest in 10, expect one to do well, 
and nine to fail. Anyone has something to add? I can add something because uh, I'm one of the founders who developed the project based on AI. And also we have a token in the project, MetaTalent. So what I suggest to you guys uh, is take care about and focus about the infrastructure or they just build the bridge between their project or, uh, and uh, ChatGPT and that's all. And they say that they're building AI project or they're inventing a new things like new user interface, a UI, uh, or uh, different language models like Langchain, Hugging Face Transformers, which is responsible for generative media, uh, and many others, you know. So if you go deep into white papers, it's easy to check what is the uh, core of AI, is, which is used in the project, so maybe you will be able to recognize by yourself is it scam or not. So do your own research, guys, basically. <laughs> Okay, uh, Darren Franceschini, Bruno Miranda, Mariusz Połecz, Łukasz Augustyniak, the big, big guy in the back. Thank you very much. My name is Andrzej Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Uh, Thank if you, you want to talk a bit more about the AI agents and you enjoyed the talk, join us at the booths or around the area. And yeah, just have a nice time here because it's a really nice place and a lot of good knowledge. Thank you.